Live? Yes. Good morning. And in case I don't see good you, morning. good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Don't you say that at the end of the video? I, I say probably that should. I do. I didn't know that. And you're in a very sunny, summery place. Before yes, this video, I mean, you showed me the view. France. <clears throat> it's called La Tour de France in the Roussillon region of southern France, just right next to the Spanish border on the foothills, in the foothills of the Pyrenees Mountains. Uh, the specific area is called the Les Fenouillettes. Les Fenouillettes is the, uh, how would you say that in English? <laughs> I have no idea. It's it's based on fennel because like the there's a oh, lot of fennel around here, so it's okay. the the fennel area or the fennel <laughs> it's the fennel eds the fennel eds. I don't that doesn't make sense in English, but it makes sense. Yes, I'm at my me. brother's place, spending time with family at the moment. And I've moved in from my usual place behind my desk to be close oh, cool. to the router. Yeah, and while this was not, I mean, uh, we we broke last week for vacation time uh this i'm i'm visiting family but it's not exactly vacation time though it's nice to see family mm. or holiday time i mean but it's august so i guess everything's kind of holiday time and i'm also independent so as long as i'm in between contract everything is kind of half work half play half holiday so i don't know <laughs> whereas here we once the exam results come out it kind of feels like i'm going back to school to already. school and the yeah. exam results are out, I guess, presumably. They are. They are. And that's what we're going to talk about. But before okay. we get to that, I noticed your T-shirt earlier. Yes. I'm, I'm jealous of this one. It's nice, right? I, it's really good. Oh, it's a chunk one. Yeah, it's a chunk. Uh, I, I got those. I think I bought that. I mean, you can see from the, the it's kind of all thread. It's old. Uh, I bought it. I believe I bought it at a TJ Maxx in London years ago. For like not much money just browsing yeah. through you know i was wearing a chunk t-shirt yesterday today i have on a literary reference Ooh. thought police ministry of love in a policeman's badge i like it that's mm. really good mm. so it's uh given it my brothers i have new kinds there's new mugs oh wow I, I, yeah isn't and that... uh, given there's children in this house, not right now, but uh, so there's a lot of, you know, cartoon mugs. <laughs> Who is that? That is the lion in Madagascar. He is from is. Madagascar. I've only seen the first one. Well, he's in the first one. Yeah, I do remember. And I'm sticking with this one. Well, yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a strong mug. So it's a killer mug. Is it a mug? I call it. Or is it, it cup? It's... There's no handle. It's a cup. Please. But Cut. I mean, I call it a mug because, because I don't have an <laughs> excuse for it. So yes, once so exam you want results, us to talk about exam results? Yeah, I do because you know I haven't had an exam result in a long time. I don't think I have a very knowledgeable or expert. I don't know what kind of expertise I'll be able to provide on the topic. <laughs> when was the last time you received an exam result? The last time I received an exam result. So we're not 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 talking about anything medical. Uh, <laughs> don't I know. I, I, I'm so going to say I, I really don't know. But let's say when I was 21 and I did my my degree and in, uh, in my well, it was like not even a degree officially. It's just professional certification in graphic design. So like 20 years ago. Yeah, and that wasn't even something that I had to sit an exam. It was just like it was given to me after I. We were graded on some stuff, but it wasn't even an exam. It was like, no, there was actually. Sorry, there was because I had to prepare a whole thing, and you know, no, sorry, I had to do. A, I had to prepare a whole file and and do a creative presentation, and that was graded both on the quality of the, of the of the. I can't even remember what I did, but I, I remember <laughs> going in there, and I had all these printed things, and I, I think I did a mock magazine or something I can't remember um, and uh, and present it so there was a it was an oral presentation that it was graded on and uh, the quality of the graphic design project that I was presenting it would have been really interesting if you said you didn't have to sit an exam because that's exactly what's happened in England 
So okay. the A le- the A level results came out last week. So the week mm-hmm. before last, last as it last Thursday, the GCSE results came out. So the A level results for for anyone who's like not English are the results that determine whether you go to university, and the GCSE results for the exam that you take when you're 16 that determine whether you want to go to do A levels or maybe get a job or do some other kind of apprenticeship or further education. So all the exam results are out and none of these people, young people sat any exams because of the coronavirus. Well, I think there's something similar in France in so far. I don't know how it happened exactly, but all the people from ending high school had a baccalaureate that was like borderline given to them. Is that what you mean there as well? Yeah. I yeah, say borderline because I'm not really familiar with what's going on. And the general gist is I hear a lot of parents complaining that the quality of education has been going down and going poorer in quality over time. And that wow. exams have been both easier and so less meaningful uh, okay. in their results. And that okay. culminating that this year with the coronavirus uh, as like they were just basically given to them. And so all the all the all the students who graduate this year have a meaningless graduation, according to some. I don't know the details, and this is That's headlines, and, headlines and hearsay. So I don't know. Is that the hearsay in the UK as well? It's, it's, it's interesting because it's different. But is, is baccalaureate like pass fail? Yeah. It is. Okay, so here it's... All well, then you can have degrees of success, of success beyond pass. Oh, that's interesting. The, the French grading system is on 20. Okay. Students are graded on on 20. So 10 is average and is a pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then 12 is considered, that's what I have. So 12 is like, so you get mentions, honorable mentions kind of thing. So 12 mm-hmm. is a fairly good. Mm-hmm. 14 is good. 16 mm-hmm. is very good. There's not really anything beyond because even though so the the French system usually tends to grading hard, quite harshly, so even though we're graded on twenty, any people rarely get anything above sixteen unless it's a seriously uh, pragmatic and rational kind of test. So like there's a math thing and you can't argue whether it was a pass or fail. Yeah, and get every single point possible. So it's possible to get every single point. Still, it would be extremely rare. It's already rare to get anything to do with above 16. It's super rare to get 18 or above out of 20. And do you know anyone is... who got 16? Yeah, yeah, I know some people who have got 16. So that happens uh, for the overall baccalaureate because the overall baccalaureate is an average of all the different disciplines that you went through. See, this is, this is again, very different with the, with the, the system. With the baccalaureate, you study. Things have changed range. since my days as well, but I, I don't know how, so I, I can't talk about how it is now. It's not the same as, uh, but it's but still, it's, there's still gonna be an average of different disciplines that you yeah, took tests Yeah, and you, you do a whole range of stuff because there are some schools here that won't offer A-levels because they think A-levels aren't as good as an international baccalaureate. So some, some schools in this country, are go, they're going down the IB route as it's called. Because A levels, you pick a narrow range of subjects and then you choose what you want to do. So I did French economics, history, and I had to do what's called general studies, which was fine for me. I just did a bit of everything. But I also did an AS in maths a year early. So I did an AS is like half an A level. Now, over here, so to go back to your thing about the narrative and like the general hearsay and the big headlines, over here, the headlines are, it's a fiasco, results have been downgraded, the government algorithm determines where you are, it's where you live, not how good you are, that gives you your A-level results. So and because what is this A- government algorithm? So the- <laughs> It gives your results based on where you live? Well, this is, this is kind of my take on the whole thing, oh, okay. right? Because, okay, because, because if you went to a private school, yeah. your results, would have been would have been good and it would have been very good to allow you to go to university if you were a high achieving student who worked really hard and probably would have done really well in the public exams but you went to a state school your results were likely to have been lower than what you would have expected to get now the the whole thing is i think really challenging for young people and by the way slight tangent 
I went into school for the GCSE results to talk to some of my students. One of my students came up to me. This week, you mean? This week, yeah. One of my students. There were students came, in school. Okay, sorry. Yeah, because they they went into school to pick up their results only for results okay. day. Okay. They're not available online. Oh, but anyway, sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's the whole thing here. You go okay, into okay. school and then you pick up your results, and then the other whole thing that happens is schools will take pictures of their students like jumping receiving their certificates it's a whole like meme status thing okay but one of my students i was talking to him and he left a comment on our first or second episode uh -huh. saying oh my god this was really good it's really worth a watch right and then another one of my students has then subscribed to my channel because like they want to watch the episodes when i spoke to him he was like it was really good it was really good I was like, oh, great. So what did you think of it? He was like, yeah, it was, it really made me think. And I watched it when I was drunk and it was really good. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. That's fantastic. <laughs> so Can you even be saying that on this channel? I don't care. I mean, oh, he's, okay. what, I mean, he's going to like, teenagers are going to get drunk. What are they going to do? And <laughs> no, but I love that. I have, uh, well, I feel honored that our content is drunk watching worthy <laughs> whatever something like that because I I, 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 I I think I, so too i wouldn't watch it if it was you know not entertaining particularly if i'm drunk actually <laughs> i wouldn't watch it if it's not interesting or entertaining altogether anyway but exactly so he, he thanks to him well he watched you. it he thought yeah. it was great awesome. and yeah and so i'm gonna put them all on my channel because that's they found my channel well so, this is um, encouraging for also having future questions hopefully from students oh there are going to be future questions okay great. for sure for sure i'm going to be going on about this at school anyway but i've got to make sure i put all the episodes on my channel now so i, I haven't got them all i've got like i need to put them on but i need to send you the latest one or two i think anyway. so but his their experience of results okay and this is gcse's mm -hmm. so they're a bit younger what happened with gcse's after the a levels was that they went with the teacher predictions. So this whole process, when, when lockdown happened, the government and the exam board said, right, we need from every single school what the teachers think that the students are going to get. And then the exam boards are going to look at all of that and they're going to compare it with the previous year with what that center, that particular school got and make sure there's like, you know, some adjust for it. And then we're going to issue the exam results. So that's what we were expecting. And generally, from one year to another in a school, there's a pattern, there's a trend, there's, you know, usually the best predictor of what's going to happen next is what's happened before. There's some, you have some kind of idea, right? Now, the problem there is, if you're at a state school, like a, a government funded school, and your results have been going up and up, then the trend is you might get better. But if you've kind of been all right, and you have a really good group of students, you probably would have gone up. Of course, the exam boards aren't going to know that. So even before the exam results were issued, schools were going, oh, we don't know if this is going to be very realistic or whatever. So that was kind of, everyone was like, fingers crossed. Teachers were like, well, we've done our best. We've put, we've made some judgments. Let's see how it goes. The results were the day before or the couple of days before the first set of results were about to be issued. The government comes in and goes, no, we're changing things. We're not going with the exam board. We're going with, we've come up with a special algorithm for how things are going to be graded. And this is what we're going to do. Now, okay. bas basically, it, the way it's played out and the way you see it on social media is the government algorithm has come in and downgraded everybody if you went to a state school. But if you went to a private school, you're fine. So what's happening is, Private school, loads of money, you're fine. The gap gets bigger. Didn't go to private school, state school, you're not going to do as well. Uh, do you know, I, I don't understand, I, I'm completely puzzled by this whole thing. I mean, you started to explain it to me before we started recording, yeah. but okay. So students didn't sit exams this year, right? Correct. They didn't sit okay. exams. Uh, well, yeah, okay, they didn't sit public exams, but in January, or in most schools, they do a mock exam. 
Is that relevant? Why is that relevant? It, it's, it's relevant because the some schools were saying that, oh, those grades that they got in the mock exams should be the grades that they get in the public exams. Presumably, I'm just checking because this was like that when I was in high school. Yeah. The mock exams are held and organized by each one of the schools, not by yes. not at a national level, right? Yes, correct. Whereas the exams are national exams. Yes. They're, they're the same by everyone. They're managed nationally. They're not managed per school, right? Yes. Okay, but, but right. those exams did not happen. Those national exams did not happen. Okay, so I'm just like going step by step. <laughs> that did this not is happen. good. This is, so, why, this is why I want you to do this. This is good. So, so and then that didn't happen. And they said, well, we're just going to... So how are we going to decide what grade the students get, even though they did not sit an exam? And we're going to base it on... What the what? teachers think they're going to get. That okay, was the, so the next thing. step was like the, the head teacher of that class is going to decide for each one of their students what grade they should get for what is normally a national exam. Correct. Okay. Based and on then, all the stuff that we've been doing through the year. Well, basically, yeah, except that it's like each one of the teachers going, you're worthy, you're not. Pretty much. Fair or not, that's the way it goes. Okay. It's, yeah. it's just, just, okay. And then that was how it was going to be until when? So, uh, okay, the, the step that happens in between is that yeah. each exam board, depending on which, because depending on which exam you do and which subject you do, you will yeah. have a syllabus from a particular exam board. Now, the exam board is national. The different yes. schools enter their their sub enter their students for their subjects for that exam board and the exam board controls what happens at a national level so the exam board then collects all that data at a national level and goes hmm okay how is this center how is this school done how's that school done let's do some clever maths and look at what happened last year look at the distribution of grades and blah 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 and then we'll issue the grades so that was what was supposed to happen but were they going to issue the grades that the teacher said the grade should be? They or might they, it was have. Not clear? It was not clear. They, it was because uh, the line that we were taking was because okay. how would the exam board know to change the grade that the teacher said the grade should be? Yeah. So we but had before to, we even get. I know we're going to the algorithm next, but I just yeah, before we yeah, get there. Yeah, you're right. This is I great. Mean, I, I, this is a rhetorical question. I don't think anybody knows. I'm it's like, rhetorical. But, there's no way for the exam board to say, well, I don't think that school or that student should get that grade. How would they know? The only way they could do it is because, for example, in my subject business, we've yeah. been using one particular exam board for the past, like, actually nine, 10 years. So they know, because that exam board at a national level knows each school, they know how long that school has been using their qualification they know what the trends have been with the distribution of the grades. They, they can look at that. So they can look at nationally all the people who are doing business and they can look each school, how each school is doing. But what would you do that with that subject. data? Would you, go, would you go like, well, actually this school is way above or below last year's average. So what you just said is not possible. This, I, but this, I, I don't... Is? It's, it's a whole black box. We don't know. But I think that's what they did. I think they would have gone well, last year. It comes out. It would have been a human I think the, ma judgment. the main modest operating like, thing is that we, you don't know. They just did something. They looked at the data. And we say they it could be just, just an intern, maybe. <laughs> it could be. No? It could be. But the, th the it thing is... It could be somebody absolutely not qualified to make those kinds of decisions for millions of students. But it's good. What but, makes you qualified to decide when you don't know, you don't know the teachers, you don't know the school, you don't know the students, and you're just like, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's the right grade. But it calls into question the entire system because normally what happens is all their papers get sent to, like, and scanned in, and then teachers or ex-teachers or anyone who wants to be an examiner who has some subject knowledge Great applies thing. to the exam board and then marks the marks questions 
And then they, what happens is when, when each, uh, each teacher or examiner goes to like a training day where they mark a bunch of papers and then a team leader says, yes, your grade is within tolerance, you're certified to go and mark uh, like 200 exam scripts. Yeah. Do you do and that? And then I've never done it. I couldn't think of anything more horrific to do over the summer, <laughs> even though it really, really enhances your teaching. Like it may, because you yeah. know exactly what the examiner is looking for. So you your whole teaching becomes, oh, let me teach them. I'm what sorry, just give exam. me one sec because my sister's trying to call. I apologize. It's all right. But it's honestly, right. Willem, the questions you're asking are perfect. It's perfect. All right, are we ready to get to the algorithm? I, th I think so. So either way, all, all my all my stuff with my teachers, with another teacher, gets was shoved into a black box that was the exam boards. And then we expected to get it ratified and that was going to be our results. And when yes. the students the students are asking us, so what are we going to so, get? Okay, so actually my original question was when yeah. was that? Was that in June, in July? In... So okay, so that was we had to have it all done by the beginning of June. Okay, beginning of June. And then when did you get the announcement going? Well, actually we have this algorithm. About two days before the results came out in August. When, when is that? 15th of August? Yeah, it's about the 15th, 15th of August. Is. Oh, sorry. Last, the, last so the results, uh, so 15th the, of August was last Saturday. So like just before that. So the A level, the A level results always come out in the second week, uh, second Thursday of August. So it was about the Tuesday, Wednesday okay. of that week. The, okay. the government was like, okay, no. And so what was the announcement? What did they say? What's the... You know, government announcements, I'm like, oh, lip's sake. I'm just going to, you know, it was basically... So the exam board or the Ministry of Education, Secretary the, of Education... Not the exam boards. Exam boards separate from the government, sorry. right? So, yeah, the, okay. the education would have been... Board. Would have been... The government would have said, actually... We want to make sure standards are maintained. So what we're going to do is we've got an algorithm that's done some things and we're going to make sure it's all done properly and these will be the results. Right. At which point, as a teacher, I went, well, that was all. The whole set exercise is pointless. <laughs> but it was just like you said. Here's some data, black box, here are the results. <laughs> so, and then, I mean... <laughs> what kind of algorithm would you have put together to decide what the grades are? The, the information that you have, as you said, as far as I understand, all the information you have is past results. And yeah. the results that have been recommended by the teachers this year, whether they've been taken into account or not, I don't know. But what would you do with that? Then you would have to give it, you would have to assign value in addition to the value that is there. Keep talking. Like, you know, my, my delivery has come. Keep talking, but okay. I can hear you because I'm on Bluetooth. So you have to assign value to work out what it's going to be. But what, what would you put in your algorithm? I mean, actually, should we say what an algorithm is for everybody just to make sure we have, we're talking about the same thing when we, we all agree on what the definition of it is? I think we should say what an algorithm is. All right, all right. So, so because what, that's so useful you, for all sorts of conversations. And you students, have an by the definition. way, on conversation with students and young people, not enough of them understand and know what an algorithm is, and they really need to know. I think we probably mentioned this a couple of times in our first episodes about getting to know yourself, because, so anyway, an algorithm is a set of instructions. That's all it is. An algorithm is a set of instructions. So, uh, and it says, if this, then that. Great. Uh, so now the word is overly used. It's become a huge buzzword uh, yeah. and people use it for anything and everything. It's just like, yeah. it's, it's as much, yeah, the world, you know, there's no seasons and uh, climate change because of the algorithms and the, uh, and the satellites. You're like, okay, sure. Whatever. <laughs> There's a it's, word we can I, use I to make ourselves sound clever. This is an ongoing joke I have with my brother-in-law, you know, when we don't know what to talk about and we mock non-existent conversations talking about the weather. Uh, and I mean, we also talk about the weather sometimes, but you know, uh, just, I mean, 
the algorithms and the satellite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just break everything. But that's this generation. Maybe that's what they think. Uh, what's the point of even trying if my if my exam results are going to be determined by some algorithm? Back, so, I, so back to the point on as given an algorithm is a set of instructions. Yeah. Uh, everybody talks about data driven, which is a complete misnomer because nothing yes. is data driven. It's yes. driven by the instructions you give the algorithm, and no robot is smart enough to give that instructions. And, and also the you interpretation. Could about, you the could interpretation argue about of the data that as gives well. itself in, yeah, but that's the interpretation of the data and the decision of what to put in the algorithm has been done by a person most of the time. Yes. So I, 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 I'm ready to believe that some computers are really borderline super smart, can decide certain instructions for themselves, or they can yeah. grow certain things. But I don't, I mean, I, I don't think that this thing that has been done in less than two months is one of them. So presumably the information that you have at your disposal are past results, but it, you're, you, you're then overly <laughs> deterministic because you're imposing the past on this version of the future at the level of every school and imposing that on students. So clearly the whole thing's unfair. It was unfair before even deciding that an algorithm should be involved, and, and which makes no sense. I mean, it makes no sense, right? Why? Why? What is now, there? Did they provide a reason or a reasoning aside from, hey, I want to be useful and uh, spend all my budget. Uh, so I just uh, hired this intern for no money and they've made an algorithm. Well, I'm, in the UK at the moment. to the tech engineer who made the algorithm <laughs> in less than two months. What have they done? Exactly. You have managed to sum up and articulate everything that I'm thinking and that probably other teachers are thinking in like less than a minute. <laughs> it is, but you, it's, 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 it's so frustrating and it's frustrating for young people. And it, I do think it calls into question the exam system and the school system, as we've talked about before. And oh, yeah, the, it totally does overly deterministic this whole thing oh, if you don't get those grades like your life is determined so i hear uh, there, there are stories about people I mean, it was unfair to begin with it was already unfair to have the grades be decided by the teachers but i guess it was just like okay well what, what how do we do it i think in france they just gave it to people rather than saying uh, i'm not even sure that's actually true i need to check but um, who knows but you know there are there are people you could get someone who worked really hard at a state in a state school who has predicted high grades, the grades they needed to go do medicine at uni, who has results has been downgraded, so they didn't get the grades to go do medicine, even though- Why would their results be downgraded? Based on their of... results from that? So also the other thing is how do you, even with this algorithm, yeah. what kind of value assignment would you go from the results of the school to the results of each individual student? Because would you base it, like, would you make an, some kind of median or average between the results of the school last year and the results of that student over the course this of this is, year? Or what? how would you but, even decide what makes sense there? Exactly, because also each year group, each cohort is completely different. You can have a cohort that is truly brilliant, amazing, they're wonderful, and they, go, they get really good results. The next cohort comes along and they suck. That's just the nature of like and the group. Why would my grades be decided by last year's students that is not me? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is what we do has, as teachers. <laughs> so is this completely done? Are people complaining? Are they trying to overthrow this decision? What's happening? So there's been overturn this decision or overthrow it? I don't know. So I have a the decision. Now, what was interesting? What, what recourse do the students have? Because they're just, they're just, it feels like they're just completely screwed in many cases, unless they it have does. an A, in which case they don't care, maybe. But And of course, the people in private schools tended to get more of the A's than the grades they needed, right? So, yeah, so how, what's that part of the story? How does that happen exactly? The You mean the private school versus the state school? Yeah. Yeah. So, how, like, how was that? Was that just a, um, a noticing that they just, how did that happen? Is it because they tend to have better results? Or did somebody go in and look at the results and go, hey, it's, there's that trend going on or what? No, nobody went and looked at it. It tends to be private schools will get better results. Private schools tend to have more money. They tend to have 
rich parents so they can afford tutors or whatever and the results tend to be higher and about like all the people who a significant proportion of this country's prime ministers and ministers went to this university and this private yeah, school. That's, but that's Eaten just the off. general trend and the self-fulfilling prophecy of the, you take money away from national public education and then be surprised that there's like the results are not as good as before. But I mean, yeah, whatever. and that and that's kind of I'm critical it, of that kind of thing, and I'm clearly opinionated towards one way. It's it's unfortunate that the world looks like that right now. It's yeah, sad. and and what the algorithm has done for one for just trying to make it relatively straightforward and simple is exacerbated that effect exacerbated that the the people who got the higher results tended to be in the richer areas and the richer private schools and the people who got the worst results it's it's rather than on merit someone who from a poorer area who could have done well and gone on and be a doctor yeah. has done that so the small chance that one student might have had to excel better than anybody else in their school and to maybe have a chance to get to a better university based on their own personal exam results Yes, uh, is just thwarted because yes. that person just now is, has what a C instead of an A. I don't know. Yeah, a B, a B instead of an A, which means I can't go do medicine. I've seen a few stories like that. And, I mean, why would based on? Well, <laughs> this is interesting <laughs> yeah. to learn about, but it feels like a fruitless conversation. E Are we just commenting on a uh, commenting on something that's happening in the UK that we can't do anything about? We we, we kind of are, and there are a couple of other things I want to add to it and, and bring you like straight into the conversation. So the week Scotland, they get their exam results the week before. Okay. okay. And they did a similar thing with the exam boards and whatever. And then the a lot of the results were a lot lower. Students didn't couldn't get into universities they wanted. There were lots of protests about not you should go with what the teachers judgments are blah 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 mm -hmm. in scotland the government very quickly responded did a u-turn and said okay we're going to honor what the teachers have said okay in england hasn't happened didn't happen so the except with gcse's there was no algorithm they just went with whatever the teacher judgments were with a few exceptions okay so the algorithm thing is for the a-levels in england yeah how about yeah. wales don't know about Welsh. No, Welsh exam board <laughs> slightly different. I, this is what I mean. It's just a big mess. Right. That fiasco is the only word I could think of, and even th which is why I wanted to talk to you about it because you will just unpick it and destroy it, and and you have perfectly. And okay. cool. and, and I'm left thinking what I always end up thinking around exam time is I want the best for my pupils. I want sure. the best for, my, for the, the the young people I taught, but equally. I don't want them to be left thinking that their whole life is determined by their exam results. Well, could all the parents, teachers and, and people like group together to complain and, and just, I don't know, just ask for, ask for something else to change, just like group together and petition the government for that. I guess they could, I, I guess we could. And I think that, it's some it kind will, of like like the equivalent of whatever a class action suit would be in the UK. It might it might force a re-examination of the system, but I don't think it will. Maybe because I'm just cynical and tired. I don't know. But okay. don't be cynical and tired. <laughs> I but I that's mean, why put a, put, put a petition. Maybe there is a petition out there. Find it. So the teacher unions, the there's something called the College of Teachers. Uh, the teacher unions and the college of teachers are beginning to formulate some kind of thing to the government to say, what are we going to do about this? The, uh, there was something else I was going to say, which I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the exam boards are offering students the opportunity to retake exams if they want to at some point later in the year, if they're not happy with their but results. Retake, if there's not retake, they haven't taken exams at all. It, it uh, yeah, normally no. they would have a, yeah, they have, they would just right. take the exams. Nobody's they would taking just take the exam. the exam. Yeah. I use retake because it's like, it's, no, but it's, I know, but it's, but it's not retake. It's because you didn't take exams in the first place. The, a chance to sit the exam, take the exam for the first time. If you think your result isn't what you want it to be, there is that chance as well. Okay. I don't know how they, so if you're lucky that. enough to have an A, obviously you're just like not going to yeah. say anything. 
Because there are also then, people who've done better than they thought they would. I'm probably. sure. <laughs> I still, I'm still completely puzzled as to like individually, individual students. How would you determine what the like person A should get an A and person well B A B C D? It went anyway. It doesn't matter. Forget it. it. I don't think it's. It doesn't make any sense. It kind of comes. It does come down to individual teachers marking all of that, but. The other thing I want to throw into this conversation is, have you okay. read Thinking Fast and Slow? Still not. No, I, I, it's a big time on, on your my list. list. It's, a, it's a missing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely. I really need to read it. It's, it's been a, anyway. Yeah, it's it's, it's it a hardcore book. It's amazing. And it's pretty heavy going, but it's really, really. Yeah, I mean, I know really the good. principles and I've used them. And a lot of people in my line of work talk about them and are quite fascinated with the whole thing uh it's and so i need to i need to read it um yeah so in that book the one of the experiments they did was the they got a careers advisor careers counselor and the what they thought a student should do based on an interview and some questionnaires and whatever and then they got an algorithm <laughs> that used three pieces of information and that uh, yeah, it was three. It was two or three. It wasn't much. It was minimal information about the student, about what they should do. And the algorithm was more effective than the careers guidance at making the decision. What right? does that mean? What, it, no, well, what, what does it, that mean? Okay, so it means... What does more effective mean in this circumstance? In this circumstance about the yeah. what they should should probably in the right word, what they would should go on to do based on their profile. So the okay. the best the best suited path for that student based on the limited information from like I think it was subjects, results and age or something. It was it was ridiculously limited versus what the careers counsellor suggestion for what they should do the most appropriate path but what does that mean what does the most effective decision mean from the part of the algorithm is it because they decided beforehand that the most effective would be x and whether the algorithm guessed that result or did they go talk to the student five years later to find out about their life and see if that was the right decision it was it was more like it was more like and i know the they didn't one. do that that they didn't do the thing five years later I don't think no they, they did didn't that. do the thing five years later but that but the it was basically the, what you just said the first one that you said the because i mean now, it seems very interesting but what you're describing doesn't sound like uh, oh yeah let's just let me let me put this in context i find yep. psychological experiments and studies fascinating as many people do mm -hmm. uh and in the same way that media headlines have clickbaity yeah. book titles based on one study that's been done with 20 students and means an interesting result, but it's just a, it's an anecdote, really. It's an anecdotal. Uh, so it's not to put back into question all the research that's been done by Daniel Kahneman and, and Professor Trotsky at the time, uh, both professors, I think. Um, but when you give that example, what were you, what was your point? Because okay. it sounds like it was something that was a very, very small study where you have to predetermine a number of elements to the result because, because they're otherwise they're too wide. So like you have to say, okay, well, the predetermined best result possible for that student. So you are putting interpretation on something before the machine even does anything. By the way, where I don't even know if we're talking about what that student actually wanted to do with their life as the right, the best answer possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, my my point, my point for doing this is the this whole conversation and this whole thing. Sorry, one sec. Yeah. So. Sorry. That was very skillfully done. The so the whole. Was it? Yeah, it was the whole the whole thing that I'm I think that there's two points I really want to make about this whole uh -huh. thing. The first point is that the results don't have to determine your future. Exam results don't determine your future. They, they just don't. And the 
the interpretation, so much of life is down to interpretation. Yeah. So much of life is down to, and it can be luck, fluke, whatever you want to call it. But the, and I'm not saying hard work doesn't play it, play its part and making the most of opportunities doesn't play its part. But so much of what happens can be down to some person's interpretation, judgment on whatever limited information they had at that point. Sure. And so many of the young people that I speak to are so deterministic, almost fatalistic in their thinking. Now I can be too. Like what? Like like they'll think, oh, like one of the students I was speaking to on in school when he went came to pick up results was something mm -hmm. like, I got this result, but I think he literally said the words, but I'm a retard. Like that that's how he speaks. Like, and that's his view of himself. And I said to him, what do you mean? I had a whole conversation with him earlier when at school saying, when you say things like that, you, that becomes your world. That's, it's not true that that's who you are. And yet in a school, in a, in a results driven, determined kind of exam results determined world that we live in, even though it's based on the interpretation of whatever situation you're in, that's how they think. And that's what I really want the point of this conversation. I think you've illustrated it really well with just the unpicking of the entire thing and showing you how farcical it is that it can come down to an interpretation of someone's book or someone, a teacher's result or the algorithm or some other circumstance that you're going to give, give away rather than thinking, well, who am I? What do I want to do? How am I going to get there? Let's start. You know, and you've achieved so much and you've done like I know like you were writing a brief on your way down on the train. This right. life that you are you doing something, right? Well, you did work writing, on the train. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I did work throughout the train and then I had a call with you and a couple of other friends. And you can't even remember the like your the last time you had exam results was like twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean in the in the grand scheme of things, regardless of the studies you're gonna do you won't remember them, <laughs> it's very important. Now, they might be very important to the line of work that you find yourself in later because, mm. because you studied something in particular to be able to get to your profession, but you will also realize that GCSC and A-levels is the very first step in whatever you're going on in your life, whether they're studies or other things. Because that's for students, you know how certain uh, disciplines or topics of study, you learn a little bit, at primary school and then you're like going to middle school or high school they're like all right you remember this thing you learned yeah forget it that's not actually what happens we're going to do the real thing now and learn actually how math works or whatever or like do you remember that little bit of history okay let me give you the bigger picture you should like you didn't get it at all the reason why is like you were nine so you didn't have the brains developed enough now let's talk about the second world war in this context global politics whatever uh when you get to uni, you're going to have a lot of the same kind of stuff. They're like, all right, you learned all this stuff. That was nice. Okay, let's get to serious business now. <laughs> and whatever you do, whether you go working, whether you learn a trade or a craft, whether you study more because you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or some other thing that you need to study specifics, uh, or even just, you know, a historian, I don't care, whatever. Um, there's so much more. There's so much more. And at the time right now that you get those results, it is super important because it is very important mm. to be able to get to the right kind of university. It might be very important. And it feels like it determines a lot of your life because that's all of your life right now. It is big right now. But in the whole bigger context of a bigger life, it not it's not that it doesn't matter because it matters to your life right now but it's, if you can't put it in more context but that's what i and we i guess are trying to provide is to say listen i understand and yes it should be the most important thing for you right now but in the grand scheme of things it doesn't weigh all that much mm. and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't actually go ahead and talk to your parents and say hey let's do something together because this is unfair even if you got an a by the way but whether you want to do or go there, that's a whole other, that's down to you and down to your teacher union, down to go, down to saying whether you can do something about it or not. I like to think that you can do something about it. 
kind of junk kind of heavy and significant. But I'll tell you what, I mean, I happen to be visiting family because as you know, and but the yeah. people sitting watching don't know, I was at a funeral yesterday because a, a family member just passed away. So in the context of a funeral memorial and you hear about somebody's life and uh, so that's that's what I mean by the grand scheme of things. Mm. Mm. It's, you know, in the whole of your life, I can only hope and by the way, I wish that you have more and bigger, better, more interesting things to worry about than this year's exam results. And at the same time, right now, they are the most important thing to you. That makes sense. And maybe I for think... a lot of people that are not that interesting, and they're like just another drunk student watching us who's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you've, again, I think you've summed it up really well. You've, You've managed to get something really profound in, as usual. And it's that double-sided thing. Right now, it's important. But at the same time, in the bigger scheme of things, it isn't that important. And you're, it's, I don't know how you balance the two. Oh, I love holding both, like, both. I love holding Paradox. statements that the, there's so many things today that seem like, particularly with everything to do, you know, where like we can maybe tackle that topic next time, cancel culture uh, or uh, everybody yes. being riled up. And the most important thing on social media apparently is to be righteous and start calling out other people's behaviors. Uh, the, all that kind of stuff is also a kind of environment inside of which it gets very, very difficult to imagine that there are things that's, that, that can be true at the same time, even though they might sound contradictory. But over, the, over a lifetime, a person and their actions are more than just you are bad or you are wrong or just, you know, it's, it's not binary. Life mm. isn't, mm. there's a mm. lot of binary things to life, mm. Mm. but a life is not binary. Mm. And maybe part of the fun my is aunt who just passed away was a huge the person who just passed away my family member my aunt was an enormous presence a huge force of nature she was present and active and social and uh, socially in politics locally she opened her door to a lot of people but she was also for a large part of her life I, I as far as i know a very difficult person to be with sometimes so for all of the positive that she may have created for being a huge force mm. sometimes it was a for some people Sometimes it might have been um, how to say it's uh, uh, overwhelming mm. for some people mm -hmm. that might have occurred at, and that I know have occurred at certain times as negative. Mm. So was she a good person or a bad person? It doesn't matter. She, as we were reminded, she always said she hated funerals because they were hypocritical. Because <laughs> somebody you, you were usually saying good things about somebody. Even if even if they were a horrible person. Wow, wow, wow. I think that what I what I'm really getting from what you're saying is that play, play, bringing a sense of play to allows the exploration of the gray, not well, the, the non-binary. Maybe you can. Yeah, and I love the shades of gray. There are there. There are sometimes, sometimes some things are clearly black and white, and at the same time, there's all the shades of gray. Mm. Mm. Sometimes you're like, I know that this is right or this is wrong, and you know what? It feels like it's an absolute, but also everything's relative. <laughs> is that absolute? Everything is relative. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> there is oh, that is yeah that's it's not it's enough to blow my mind and so and, that's and <laughs> yes i mean i find and of course i would say that but then you're like well yeah we just play then there's a lot of different ways to interpret this thing and people get hung up on their opinions uh but they don't realize their opinions are convictions or beliefs so for example, anything to do with politics is the same kind of centers of reaction that we have for religion or anything that we believe to be intimately about who we are mm -hmm. as people. Mm -hmm. 
However, some of those motivations, inclinations, opinions, or belief, if you just kind of scratch the surface a little bit, you realize they're thin. Like you're like, wait a minute, why? Why do I vote conservative or labor? Really? Like, did I really look at what my local politician or MP is doing? And did I really look at what's going on? Did I really think about what my convictions are? Or is it something I inherited? Or is it something that maybe somebody said something sometime or maybe because my dad votes one, so I either vote like they do or the opposite? Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's like also taking us in, yes, play, but, but think also. Sometimes, not all the time, but yeah, do think. Just take, and nobody's attacking you. When, the, when somebody says, oh, well, I think that, I, I had that whole conversation in the car with my brother yesterday. Another one, he was talking about a conversation he had with somebody else. Then the amount, and I've had that conversation with several people, the amount of people these days are, who are, who feel threatened and like seriously physically attacked when you say something like, so he, you know, my brother, dad, and he's very, very well politically versed, news versed, et cetera. So, and he said something about a national radio that might have been biased. Uh, and people find that threatening. And he's like, but yeah, no, media has a bias. Of course it does. But, but it does. Media, every single media has a bias because it's yeah. been made by somebody is showing you a certain version of reality. So there is, this, there is no objectivity because it's been made by people. So it comes through and is analyzed through the regard of somebody. I'm not saying it's evil because of course the immediate response like, well, you're, you're a conspiracy theorist. He's like, well, <laughs> what did I give you a theory about? I didn't say anything. And then the conversation's over. The people are like, no, you're, you're not, you're not, I don't, you're one of those people. I don't want to talk to you. Rather than being someone who's an explorer or an adventurer or wondering why and questioning. And yeah. like, because I, I can completely identify with that kind of role. I've always been the person who, who's, I'm that guy in a meeting that will ask a question when someone says, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> and I can feel, I can feel my colleagues. I can feel the eye rolls. <laughs> I can just, I can, because I can't, I just want to know. Sometimes I just, I just like, so yeah. And then I, oh, but. It really depends. I, sometimes I don't have questions or sometimes I'm looking at everybody. I'm like, nobody wants anybody to ask questions here. So I'll shut up. But it depends. I, I've, it depends. I've done that too, but that, it, how, it, I, I mean, we're, we're kind of wrapping up, but I do want to know yeah. from, from you. Sorry, I, I kind of went, I would, I went into well, a tangent. A tangent. So. This is a perfect tangent from, from the starting point. But how do you think you became that? How did, how did you become willing to say stuff like that? Like to question and to say, it's biased, of course it's going to be biased. And then why? How did you, what do you think led you to that? Because I'm very clear about how I became like that. I don't know. And I mean, these days in conversations, my, my brother might come across as a little bit more confrontational because he says things like that. These days, I just ask questions and I listen. I don't, I'm not even going to tell that to people mm. because I'm like, it's useless. People just get reactivated. Mm. Unless I, I, I get that I'm talking to somebody who, with whom I can have that conversation like you. Uh, but otherwise, I'll, I'll ask questions. You know, oh, you vote uh, conservative? Okay, cool. What, what does that mean to you? But how did you? What do you believe in? What What do you say? For, for example, or labor. I mean, it's still, I could be doing one or the other. But but what made you like that? Do you I don't know what made me like that. I I could point out to a few things that I know. Uh, I think that I the, where I go because I give credit. I, probably something to do with my parents and the way that I was raised. Perhaps to the fact that I have talked two languages and was raised from an international uh, okay. perspective of multiple cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also certainly place credit in having participated in coaching and uh, development, personal development programs with Landmark uh, from a very young age because mm. uh, my, my mother did the Landmark Forum as a course and I did it when I was nine years old. There was a, there was a special version for young people and another one for teens. Um, and because that's been a that's been something that's been part of my life throughout because I did it as a kid, it's always difficult. So I think it's fair to place some credit there. I don't know mm -hmm. how much or what, 
uh, because it's just been part of my life everywhere. Uh, and similarly, it's difficult to place one point of origin to say like, why are you the way that you are? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, well, I, I, I mean, was, what I was, would you say to like, what the made you who you are today? I'm like, well, I guess everything that, I've done that, so far. That bigger, that's a very big question, but the, the narrow bit about the, the, the person who's kind of willing to question and challenge and like that, that for me, I'm tr I, I can't think of anything else right now. If I, if I do, I'll tell you, I'm thinking, but. Mine's very similar. Like you said about the, the two languages, mine yeah. was like never fitting in. Like I, rem I remember when I was four, I can't, I, I'm sure I've told you this story. I remember when I was four, we were at prime play school, preschool, and we're playing this game where you put your hands in the middle of the table. Have I told you this story? I don't think so. Okay. You put someone puts their hands in. Oh no, yes, you did tell me that story. Yeah. You did, you did, you did. I remember it now. So we yeah. all put this, put our hands in, and I distinctly remember putting my hand in, and my hand's brown, the table is blue, and everyone else's hand is a different colour. Yeah. And I like I think you told me that story during uh, the call where we talked about Black Lives Matter, actually. Oh uh, yeah, I think we did, yeah. And yeah. that that was one moment I was like, oh I'm different. Yeah. And it on it's a, it was the whole double edged sword. It freed me up at the same time. It made me desperate to fit in. And it was only when I did. But you think that's linked to question to questioning things? I do. Being I do open because to, que to questioning things. I do because of because of, and it was only because I did landmark when I was twenty one, and it made me comfortable. Like I'm human, and actually I'm all right, which meant that I was okay. Be like being a heavy metal fan, never like that whole kind of rebellious not fitting in thing, was. It, even amongst heavy metal fans, like being a brown heavy metal fan, yeah. on the edge. So I was not fully immersed in everyone's way of thinking, but I wasn't totally outside. I was kind of in the middle. So I was quite willing to go, well, how come? Why? Why? What? How? And uh, can we? Yeah. And blah. That's I wasn't I always like that either, necessarily, I don't think. But I think there's one part of me that is a bit like what you said, as in being a little bit different on the outskirts of groups, people and everything else, but certainly multiple cultures, because that's also realizing that's that not everybody's the same. Mm. We're not all the same. So let's find out more. And then when I moved into my current line of work, I, I learned that to be a strategist and to be consulting the most, actually one of the first interviews opportunities I had it was 13 years ago, the person told me the most important thing is to ask questions. Yeah, mm. you need to question everything. And I think mm. from that point on, more or less, I started taking it on. Mm. But being interested in difference was, I think I, I would probably place that from after moving to London in particular. So being conscious of it before, because I was different, I moved to the States, from the States to France. Um, and then even more so because I was older and uh, moving to the UK. And just being aware of the fact that, you know, there's multiple cultures, different languages, different people who di think differently. And being interested in that, I think. Mm. And then when mm. I started learning, doing my job and being told to be a strategist, you need to learn and question everything. So I was like, all right, cool, I'll do that. <laughs> I, I say, and I that, say. And that, I think it turned out to be interesting. I was like, wow, the thing's quite interesting. You start asking a lot of questions. <laughs> I say exactly the same thing to my students, question everything. That's one of the things one of my ex people said he remembers about me. Question everything. So we we got that in common. Yeah. So. And what a wide keep a raging... spirit about it. Questioning everything can come across as like don't. That I can be occasionally negative and arrogant, so I try not to be. Um, oh, me too. But that's why I'm a teacher, so I get to be in charge and I get to manage the conversation. Hey. Okay. so yeah what a great conversation yeah thank you R results exam results your future deterministic not deterministic question everything you're not limited go explore no, no. play yeah until cool. the next and whatever time. you do with those exam results just you know make it the best thing you can and yeah. maybe it won't be exactly what you want like regardless whether whether algorithm, ed education board, or whatever your exam result turned out to be, you may or may not have gotten the university you wanted or whatever, but that happens. There's also disappointments.
you know. Mm. I don't know if that helps mm-hmm. at this particular point, but just keep going for whatever you want anyway. Yeah. Yeah, well said. Cool. Thank you, uh, as ever. See you next week, I think, yeah? Yeah, next week. Unless awesome. something changes. All right.